You know, life throws weird stuff at you sometimes. Like that day, I accidentally launched a scoop of vanilla ice cream onto some guy's pants in the park. Let's just say my name is Isabella, 28 years old, and clumsy moments kind of follow me. I was out enjoying the sun, armed with my favorite ice cream, when I tripped right near a bench where this guy was sitting, totally absorbed in his phone. Shoot, I'm so sorry. I blurted out as the ice cream plopped right onto his thigh. He looked up, more amused than annoyed, and then did something I didn't expect. He laughed. Guess I needed a bit more vanilla in my day anyway. His light-hearted reaction eased my embarrassment. I pulled out some napkins, trying to help clean the mess. I swear I'm not usually an ice cream bomber. It's cool, sit down, he gestured to the space next to him. I'm Jason, 32. And now, thanks to you, I have a sweet story about how my day got better. Grinning, I sat down. I'm Isabella, and I guess I owe you an ice cream now. We hit it off right away. Turned out Jason worked in IT not too far from where I did my web design gigs from home. We chatted about everything from tech to the latest movies, and by the time we parted ways, we'd set up a date for the weekend. Fast forward a bit, and things between us were great, but then came the day I met his mother, Mrs. Witt. Her Jason had told me she was a bit traditional, but nothing prepared me for the reality. The moment I walked into their family home, there she was, sitting with a book on astrology spread out before her. Hello, I'm Isabella. I said, reaching out to shake her hand. She looked me over, not bothering to hide her scrutiny, and then took my hand and imply. Jason tells me you're a web designer and you work from home. Her tone made it sound less like a job and more like a hobby. Yeah, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. It's going really well. I defended my career choice, feeling my cheeks heat up. She hummed, flipping through her astrology book. And your birthday, dear? I told her, and she flipped through her book, her finger tracing lines of text before she clucked her tongue. Oh, that's an unfortunate date, very challenging and astrologically incompatible with my Jason. I tried to keep my cool. Well, we're doing just fine so far. Mrs. Wilson smiled, but it wasn't warm. It was the kind of smile that said she knew better. We'll see, dear. These things have a way of showing true colors in time. The whole visit was tense. Every word out of her mouth was a subtle dig at me. My job, my background, even my taste in clothes. I got the clear message. I was not what she had envisioned for Jason. So Jason, 34, and I decided to get hitched after about three years of that ice cream incident. Yeah, three years of dating, dealing with his mom's cold vibes, and just life throwing its usual curveballs. But we were solid, you know. Like nothing could really shake us. We were sitting on the couch one lazy Sunday, just chilling and watching some old comedy flicks, when Jason turned to me, his eyes all serious, which was a rare switch from his usual grin. Isabella, I've been thinking, he started, and I felt that weird flutter in my stomach, like butterflies going nuts. What's up? I asked, trying to sound chill, even though my heart was doing somersaults. I kind of want to spend the rest of my life watching bad movies with you. What do you say we make it official? His smile was hopeful, kind of shy, which wasn't like him at all. I laughed, more of relief because hell, I wanted this so much. Are you asking me to marry you without a ring, Jason Wilson? Damn right I am, but I promise I'll get you a ring that'll make up for this lame proposal. He was grinning now, confident as he pulled me into a hug. Planning the wedding, though. That was a circus, especially with Mrs. Wilson throwing her two cents in every chance she got. We were deciding on wedding invites one evening, and she was there, of course, peering over my shoulder like some kind of hawk. You're not seriously considering this design, are you? She frowned at the floral pattern Jason and I had picked out. It's far too gaudy, Mom. It's what we want. I like it. Jason jumped in, always my champion. I like it too. I added more to stand my ground than anything else. I wasn't about to let her bulldoze every choice we made. It's your wedding. She sighed, looking anything but pleased. 
But remember, the invitation sets the tone for the entire event. The big day came faster than I expected. It was perfect, beautiful, even despite Mrs. Wilson's constant hovering. Jason looked dashing, and when I walked down the aisle towards him, his grin was all I needed to see. We had our ceremony outdoors under this big old oak tree. The preacher was a buddy of Jason's, someone who knew us as a couple and not just two individuals coming together. Do you, Isabella, take Jason to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? And do you, Jason, take Isabella to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? We exchanged rings, and when Jason slid that band onto my finger, it felt like a victory, not just over Mrs. Wilson's snide ridgesons or the stress of wedding planning, but over every damn obstacle that tried to throw us off our game. You may now kiss the bride, the preacher announced, and Jason didn't waste a second. When his lips met mine, shears erupted all around us. It was like a movie, only better because it was real, and it was ours. We've been living together for two years, and every step felt right, but buying our own place was a big leap. We spent weekends touring homes, debating features and balancing what we wanted with what we could actually afford. One sunny Saturday, we stumbled upon a house that ticked almost all our boxes. It was charming, had a spacious kitchen and a big backyard. The only hiccup, it had a swimming pool. I had told Jason about my fear of water, a fear that rooted deep from an incident in my childhood where I nearly drowned. Since then, pools, even bathtubs, were a no-go for me. But Jason, bless his heart, was enamored with everything else about the house. Isabella, I know it's got a pool, but hear me out. Everything else is perfect, and we're getting it for a steal. Jason tried to reassure me as we stood looking over the property. I chewed on my lip, considering... The house really was beautiful, and the price was incredibly reasonable for what it offered. Okay, but I'm not going near that pool, Jason, you know that, right? Jason wrapped an arm around me, pulling me close. Of course, babe. We'll figure it out, maybe down the line we can even fill it in or something. For now, we don't have to use it. We moved in, and the place was a dream come true. The space, the neighborhood. It felt right but it wasn't long before Mrs. Wilson came over to see our new home, and I braced myself for her comments. She always had a way of making her disapproval known, especially about money and my job. As she walked through our new living room, her eyes scanned every detail, her lips pursed. Finally, she turned to us, her tone laced with skepticism. It's a big place, isn't it? Must have cost a pretty penny. Jason, you're sure you can handle the mortgage on this? Jason, ever the peacemaker, tried to smooth things over. Mom, we've got it covered. Isabella and I both put in for the house. It's not just on me. I chimed in, trying to assert my contribution, tired of the insinuation that I was just riding on Jason's coattails. That's right, Mrs. Wilson. I work as well, you know. My web design job pays well, and it helped us get this place. She scoffed, clearly not buying it. Working from home on your computer all day. I don't see how that can bring in enough to afford something like this. It seems more like a hobby than a real job. The rest of her visit went by in a blur of tense smiles and changed subjects. After she left, I let out a long breath I hadn't realized I was holding. Jason wrapped his arms around me, pulling me close. Ignore her, Isabella. We know the truth. We're doing this together, and that's what matters. As days turned into weeks, our new house really started to feel like a home. I set up my home office, and it became my sanctuary. From there, I tackled web design projects that not only paid well, but also proved I was more than capable of contributing to our dream. Jason took care of the yard and maintained the pool, even though I never went near it. It was another sunny afternoon when the incident happened. 
Mrs. Wilson had decided to drop by, supposedly to bring over some of Jason's old stuff from his childhood, but I knew there'd be more to it. She always had a knack for turning a kind gesture into an interrogation. We were out in the backyard, me trying to make small talk, when her eyes fixed on the pool. Isabella, I never see you or Jason in that pool. Don't you ever swim? The question caught me off guard. I took a deep breath, deciding maybe honesty would shut it down. Actually, I'm afraid of water. Had a bad experience as a kid. Almost drowned. Haven't been comfortable around pools or large bodies of water since. Her expression shifted from curiosity to something I couldn't quite place. Was it disbelief? Disdain? Whatever it was, it didn't feel supportive. Well, that's just unusual, isn't it? A grown woman, 30 years old, afraid of a little water. She scoffed, and I felt my face heat up in embarrassment. I tried to laugh it off, but the conversation left a sour taste in my mouth. Later, I found out that it wasn't just a sour conversation, it was the start of a rumor mill. Mrs. Wilson, in her infinite wisdom, had decided to share my fear with her circle of friends and family, embellishing the story to make it sound like I was mentally unstable because of my phobia. The news came back to me through a friend who'd heard it from someone else. Isabella, is it true what they're saying, that you're too scared to even look at your own pool? Hurst and betrayed, I confronted Jason. He was furious when he heard about it. She did what? That's it, I'm talking to her. This has to stop. Jason confronted his mother, and the fallout was epic. He told her in no uncertain terms that her behavior was unacceptable. In response, Mrs. Wilson's attitude only got worse. She accused me of being manipulative, of keeping her son away from her. One afternoon, she called me directly, voice shrill and accusing. You're just trying to keep me out of the house. What are you hiding, Isabella? Meeting someone else while my son is at work? Her words were venomous, intended to wound. I was shocked. Mrs. Wilson, that's ridiculous. I would never cheat on Jason, you know that. But she was beyond reason. Oh, I know your type. You think you're so clever, but I know what's going on. I told Jason about the call, and he couldn't believe it. She said what? Now that's crazy, Isabella. You know that's not true. And I know that's not true, he laughed it off, but I was shaken. The fact that his mother would go to such lengths to paint me in a negative light was disturbing. Jason agreed and decided that we needed to set some boundaries. Visits from his mother became less frequent, and when she did come over, Jason made sure he was there to mediate. Life started feeling a bit off a few weeks after the last blow-up with Mrs. Wilson, I started noticing things, little things that wouldn't mean much to anyone else, but to me, they felt like signals in a fog. It started with the feeling of being watched. I first noticed it when I was at the grocery store. I'd be picking out vegetables and I'd get this prickly feeling on the back of my neck, like someone's eyes were glued to me. I'd turn around and sometimes catch a glimpse of someone turning away. It was probably nothing, just random shoppers, I told myself. Then it happened again at the laundromat. I was folding clothes when that same eerie feeling washed over me. I snapped my head up and saw through the front window a man standing across the street. He was just standing there, looking straight at me. I blinked, and he was gone. You're being paranoid, Isabella. I muttered to myself as I shoved the folded clothes into my bag. But the real kicker came one evening at home. Jason was late from work and I was in the living room catching up on some web design work. I felt it again, that stare. I peeked out the window, and there he was, the same man from the laundromat across the street, barely visible in the dim street light, but definitely there, definitely watching. I called Jason immediately, my voice a notch higher than usual. Jason, I think someone's been following me. I've seen him a few times now. Jason's voice was calm, almost too calm. Isabella love, you're probably just tired. You've been working so hard lately. Why don't you take a break? I tried to listen to him, tried to think maybe he was right, maybe it was all in my head. I started doing more yoga, tried meditation, anything to calm down. 
but that nagging feeling wouldn't go away. I just couldn't shake the sense that I was being watched. Then it happened. I was leaving the grocery store, and there he was in the parking lot again. This time, I was ready. I quickly pulled out my phone and snapped a picture before he could walk away. I had proof now, not just jittery nerves. When I showed Jason the photo that evening, I could tell he finally saw what I was seeing. Okay, that's not normal, he admitted. Later that night, we were walking home from a nearby restaurant when Jason suddenly grabbed the arm of someone passing by. It was him, the man from the photo. Why are you following my wife? Jason's voice was tense, his grip tight on the man's arm. The man looked cornered, his eyes darting around before settling on a resigned sigh. Look, I'm a private investigator. I was hired to keep an eye on her, that's all. Jason's brow furrowed. Hired by who? Your mother hired me. She wanted proof of infidelity. The investigator confessed, almost ashamed. Jason was livid. He pulled out his phone and dialed his mother right there. Mom, what the hell are you doing, hiring someone to follow Isabella? That's it, you're out of our lives until you can behave like a decent human being. The conversation was heated, and by the end of it, Jason was shaking with anger. He apologized to me a million times on the way home. The next day, he went out and bought cameras for every corner of our property. No one's going to invade our privacy like that again, he promised as he installed them. After everything that happened, Jason suggested we take a vacation to clear our heads. Let's just get away from all this drama, Isabella. Just you and me somewhere peaceful, he said one evening as we sat exhausted on our couch, surrounded by the quiet of our home that suddenly felt too loud. I didn't need convincing. Yes, let's do it. I really need a break. We decided on a little cabin up in the mountains, away from everything and everyone. It was perfect. The air was fresh, the scenery breathtaking, and most importantly, it was just us, no distractions, no unwanted intrusions. Up there, surrounded by the serene beauty of nature, I could feel all my tensions melting away. We spent our days hiking and our evenings cuddled up by the fire. I could breathe again, laugh again, and just be me without worrying about who might be watching or what they might be thinking. When we returned home, I was glowing, not just from the mountain sun, but with a new joy. I was pregnant. We discovered it a few weeks after we got back, and it filled us with a happiness that was profound yet tinged with anxiety. I didn't want anyone to know yet, especially not Mrs. Wilson. I was terrified that the stress she could bring might harm the baby, a little miracle we had waited for so long. Working from home made it easy to keep the pregnancy under wraps. I didn't go out much, and my belly, thankfully, stayed small, unusually small, according to the doctor, but nothing to worry about, he assured us. Every pregnancy is different, he said during one of my checkups. As my eighth month approached, and it was getting harder to hide my condition, Jason, 36, and I decided it was time to share our joy. We planned a small celebration at our house, a baby shower of sorts, inviting all our relatives. Despite everything, I felt it was right to invite Mrs. Wilson, 60. Taking a deep breath, I dialed her number, my heart thumping in my chest. It rang three times before she picked up. Hello. Hi, it's Isabella. I wanted to share some news. Jason and I are expecting a baby. We're having a little get-together next week to celebrate, and we'd love for you to come. There was a pause, long enough to make me worry I'd made a mistake, then her voice surprisingly calm. I'll be there. The day of the celebration arrived. Our home was filled with laughter and chatter, relatives cooing over baby clothes and guessing if it would be a boy or a girl. I mingled, my hand often resting on my small belly, feeling the gentle nudges of our unborn child. Everything was fine until my biggest nightmare came along, Mrs. Wilson. Throughout the afternoon, she kept her distance, whispering to anyone who would listen, suggesting that my pregnancy was a fabrication. Look at her, she would say spitefully, eight months along, and her stomach is barely showing. She's made it all up to trap my son and get at his money. 
To my relief, her words didn't take root. The guests chuckled among themselves, rolling their eyes at her wild accusations. They knew her history with me, her relentless disapproval, and took her claims as just another one of her absurd stories. But Mrs. Wilson was persistent. I'll prove it to all of you. She muttered as she stomped off, her face flushed with anger or embarrassment, maybe both, feeling a mix of dismay and a desire to finally put an end to all this nonsense. I followed her out into the courtyard near the pool. Can we just talk? This isn't true. And you know it, I pleaded, my voice calm despite the churn of emotions inside me. Her face was contorted with anger. Save it. I know what you're up to. She snapped coldly. As soon as I turned away from her, desperate to convince her, I suddenly felt a hard shove from behind. My balance lost, I stumbled forward, the edge of the pool, the water all rushing towards me in a blur of fear, terrified screams echoing. I fell into the water, the old panic from my childhood washing over me. Darkness edged my vision as I began to sink, my mind screaming for help. When I awoke, I was in a hospital bed, the sterile beep of machines filling the quiet room. Jason, 38, was there, his face pale and strained as he held my hand tightly. How's the baby? were the first words that tumbled from my lips, more a croak than a question. He squeezed my hand, his eyes glossy. The doctors, they had to do an emergency delivery. He's in intensive care now, he whispered, the tremble in his voice betraying his worry. My heart sank, tears flooding my eyes as the reality set in. Our baby, our little boy, was fighting for his life in an incubator. The next morning, I woke up, still in shock the events of the previous evening were playing in my mind like a nightmarish loop. I was in the hospital, feeling weak but driven by a need to clear up the confusion. Jason, you need to look at the security footage from last night. I said to my husband, my voice urgent but shaky. Your mom, she pushed me into the pool. It wasn't an accident. Jason looked bewildered, almost refusing to believe what I was saying. Isabella, are you sure? Mom can be harsh, but to physically push you, that just doesn't sound like her. Just please check the cameras, I insisted, my gut twisting with the fear that he might not take me seriously. He nodded slowly, pulling out his laptop to access the surveillance system we had installed at home. The tension was palpable as he scanned through the footage, his face turning from skepticism to horror as the scene played out on the screen. God, Isabella, I... I'm so sorry. I can't believe she would do this. He stammered, his face pale as he turned to me, the laptop forgotten beside him. He called the police immediately. The evidence was clear and irrefutable, leading to his mother's swift arrest. Mrs. Wilson was charged, and the trial was set. Her defense was that it was all supposed to be a joke, an attempt to prove I was lying about my pregnancy. She claimed she thought my pregnancy belly was fake, and expected it to come off when I hit the water, exposing my deceit in front of everyone. But the video evidence, along with witness testimonies from the party, painted a different picture. The jury didn't buy her story of a harmless prank gone wrong. She was found guilty of assault and reckless endangerment. The judge was stern as he delivered her sentence of three years in prison. He also ordered substantial financial compensation for the medical bills and rehabilitation costs for our son, who had been born prematurely due to the stress and trauma of the incident. Mrs. Wilson had to sell her house to cover the fines and compensation. As our son fought through his early months, undergoing numerous medical treatments and therapy to catch up in his development, the strain on us was immense. Every day was a battle filled with hospital visits, therapy sessions, and constant worry. But gradually, with relentless care and an array of medical interventions, he began to thrive. Through it all, Jason and I grew closer, our bond fortified by the trials we faced together. Our love for our son and for each other deepened in ways I couldn't have imagined. As Mrs. Wilson's release date approached, I made a decision for the safety and well-being of our family. I petitioned for and was granted a restraining order against her. 
It prohibited any contact with us and especially with our son. It was a tough decision but necessary. The safety of our child was our top priority and we couldn't risk any more disturbances in our lives. One evening, as we put our son, two years old, to bed, Jason looked at me with a soft smile. You know, despite everything, I feel lucky. We have each other, we have him, and we have a future. It was the end of a harrowing chapter, but more importantly, it was the beginning of a new story for us, one filled with hope, healing, and happiness.